So, uh, Miss Victoria, who's your favorite person in the whole uh, loading screen? Is it the Rataporn? Ugadugi? Mr. Smith? Kumar? Or is it Vasily? It's Vasily, also known as Shmagagadabu. Well, in that case, it's time that we play as Russia to give Shmagagadabu a proper welcome to the Victoria 3 world. Russia is a third great power at the start, and it has 58.8 million population, third in the world right after the Indians and the Chinese, but it has 19.6 literacy, which is really, really bad, let's face it. So our goal is gonna be to make these people a little bit more literate, and we may or may not start a little bit of a revolution. At the start, Russia definitely doesn't have a great spot. It does have a lot of population, it does have a strong army, well, that's debatable, it has a big army. It's not a strong army, as we probably learned from my multiple streams. Whenever the Russians are fighting, expect to lose that war. I'm gonna get the stock exchange first, because I need the extra bureaucratic cost reduction for trade routes. We will mainly be doing a lot of trade. We get 18,000 pounds from tariffs from day one, and this is just gonna go up. We will be assigning some consumption taxes as well, such as services consumption tax, luxury furniture, and porcelain. We're not assigning any other consumption tax for like the poor people and stuff because we need the poor people not to rebel so yeah uh, we're also going to be giving out a few edicts one in uh, Moscow we're going to get the uh, road maintenance and one in Bryansk because we're mainly going to be building in these two provinces in the first part of the campaign we are also lacking massive amounts of taxation capacity once we go through this you can clearly see here that pretty much the entire country doesn't have proper taxation capacity and it's worse in the main states like Bryansk and Moscow since the population is pretty high here and we're getting 50% tax collection debuff. Oh my god, it's even worse. It's 70% in Bryansk. Holy snaps. So yeah, we're going to be building a lot of these governing administrations. Before we do that though, we need to switch on over our construction sector to iron framed and we need to improve the amount of tools and iron that we get so we can have the available resources to build. Let's also go ahead and uh, establish more colonies in the Kazakh lands as well as in Sakhalin. Ah, uh, you know what? I'll let them take Sak Sakhalin too. Yeah, let's bring this back. I'm not gonna colonize Sakhalin. I could, if you're playing this game yourself, you probably should because, you know, it's a great area to colonize, but uh, I'm not gonna do it because I want my little Japan to be uh, happy over here. I'm gonna set Indonesia and uh, Oceania as my two extra declared interests from day one since we will be colonizing these areas too. And let's start with our production queue. Make sure you change this to ceramic luxury furniture production so we improve our production methods as well as get the market squares for your urban centers and the gas lighting. This is going to cost a lot of coal and you do not produce any coal from day one. So it is going to tank our economy. But what we can do to fix that is we go to import trade routes and start importing coal ahead of time. Do it because you're going to need all that coal. Even though it's going to say that it's going to cost you a little bit extra, it's still worth it. Of course, we're going to build some construction sectors too. So let's go with the three in uh, Moscow and another five in uh, Bryansk. That's our first production queue. Then we're going to build coal mines and let's go with uh, say 10 coal mines in the Moscow. After that basically just build as many governing administrations as you possibly can. We're probably going to need like 20 of them in each of these two states here but we're going to do five and five so that we don't completely tank our economy from the beginning. So we slowly build up to the amount that we actually need. We're also going to go to our politics, laws and we should be able to get uh, dedicated police for Yes, we can. 56%. So let's dedicate our police towards uh, repressing the general population. I'm I'm already playing the communist, aren't I? This is just a precursor. And we got input goods shortage, of course, glass and coal. Let's import some glass. We already imported coal. We also can get an alliance with the Greeks. Get it? The Greeks are orthodox and they're your little schnipple dupes. I recommend every 20 minutes or so to just go through your trades and see what's actually producing more, what's uh, not producing as much as it should, and canceling as well as getting new trades whenever you have the chance to. These new trades do cost bureaucracy, so keep that in mind. Holy schnapps, minus 42,000 balance. We're burning through this 3 million gold reserve insanely fast, but it's worth it. We have to go into credit. We have to take a lot of debt in order to advance our institutions, to advance our economy. And speaking of institutions, we just enacted a dedicated police force. That means we have access now to the institution of law enforcement. We want to bring this bad boy up to level 5. It's going to require us 1,600 bureaucracy to do that, and we have minus 700. So, of course, we're going to be building a lot more of these government administrations as we go along to enact that. Having lower 
bureaucracy gives you tax waste so that's essentially you lose out on your tax and this is also piled up with the extra tax waste that we have from each uh, province not having enough government administration buildings so overall we're basically not even getting half of the tax we're supposed to get from our country that's why i strongly encourage you guys to get central archives the earlier the better it's going to allow us to change our production method for government administration buildings and it also gives a flat taxation capacity plus 25 so it is vital to get this uh, law enacted the faster the better also what we can do to change our situation is change our our legislation an easy way to do that is uh, to reform your government we only have the gentry assembly right now so we can change this by adding say the armed forces or we can also add the industrialists or the orthodox church whenever you add something check what laws will be changed so in my case because i added the industrialists i'm gonna be changing a lot of legislation here we can change from traditionalism to agrarianism traditionalism gives minus 25 percent taxation capacity and for us remember that is a big Big issue the taxation capacity so going for agrarianism is a good deal it's not the best i would have preferred interventionalism or laissez-faire would have been the best one however i'll take agrarianism right now and change to laissez-faire later just to get rid of the taxation capacity debuff that we have right now looks like we can get 20 percent enactment success chance by making the tars will be done bringing us up to 32 percent success chance for agrarianism halfway there essentially we can also change a few of our production methods like we can get the lathis now the leaded glass and so on make sure you always keep this up to the latest production method but take note sometimes that does mean it's gonna fire some of your people and when that happens you're gonna get a lot of radicals like right now i got just from firing people a good five six thousand people as radicals later once i for example adopt the railways and i'm able to uh, fire a lot of people and i'm talking thousands that's when i get a lot more radicals hey we actually managed to get this at what 30 percent holy snaps that was really lucky that means we can subsidize specific production buildings but we cannot subsidize all of them so keep that in mind most manufacturers we will not be able to subsidize that being said look at our economy we managed to get an extra 20,000 pounds just from losing that 25% tax debuff that we had we also have to build some paper mills as it is used by our government administration buildings you're always gonna have a war with the Kazakhs once you colonize this region since they don't want to be a part of us we're just gonna mobilize mobilize and assign some of our units should be enough like three generals i believe to crush the kazakh rebellions you can just leave this in the background war is not a strong suit of this game sadly and uh you literally can just have a war and not even focus on that war at all that's not to say you can do that when you fight against proper nations i'm saying you can do that when you fight against colonial nations here not when you're fighting say against austria then you really need to focus on that war especially if you're the russians because we start with the weakest troops out of all of them make sure to also integrate or incorporate all of the uh, Kazakh lands after you've taken these and for that matter you might have some Siberian lands that are not yet integrated start doing that as soon as you've gotten the extra bureaucracy available I recommend not doing it before you got the bureaucracy because then you're just gonna get even more tax waste and even more of a hard time actually benefiting from your tax <laughs> and we got our tech done so that means we can change to standardized filing systems look at our bureaucracy skyrocket afterwards we just got 800 from one click of a button that does mean we now need need a ton more paper so we're gonna have to build even more paper mills not just 10 i feel like 25 paper mills at least we have to have extra overall around the country so let's get 10 more in kazan and another i don't know five in samara if you want to quickly incorporate stuff you can also go to your political lens click on state action incorporate and then you can see everything that needs to be incorporated right over here i tend not to do that usually because i like to click buttons and i like to click around the map but that's just me. It's a lot more efficient just doing it from the state action. Next up, we're going to be changing our taxation law to per capita taxation. Right now, that is going to give us an extra flat 53,000 alone. So that's going to be a massive change. It is going to have some opposition from our ruling party mainly. But we're going to do our best to pass this. The sooner the better. Tools are also one of the most vital items in your campaign. So make sure you have a lot of tooling workshops around your country. We're going to build 25 right now. This should be enough for us to hold 
build our economy running for the next 50 years and then afterwards once we need more tools we're just gonna build more or import more but we still need a little bit of our basic tooling industry from the start to be a functioning state essentially and what was I saying before guys check this out just from trade alone we're making 65,000 from tariffs that just goes to show that mercantilism which is what we start with here is the most powerful out of all the trade policies imaginable it's also time to build more construction sectors let's go with five in Kursk another five in Saratov and you know what let's do five in Kazan as well since we're at it hold on a second we can build gold mines in Alaska well we're gonna build that since we all know Alaska is always gonna be ours for the rest of time we're never gonna sell that state at any point in our history let's also go with level two for law enforcement since we have the extra bureaucracy to spare and since we finish with the Kazakhs let's go establish colonies in Sulawesi let's get some of these islands in the Pacific as well whilst we're at it and of course North South New Zealand and West Australia the historically colonized areas of Russia am I right oh what Prussia and Austria are at war let's check this out let's see what happens well Oh, looks like the Prussians are kicking the Austrians ass. That was a Prussian victory by far. They've lost 1,300 and they inflicted double that on the Austrian army. Let's also attack and incorporate Circassia and uh, the Caucasian Imamat into our country. It's basically just a couple of bleeps on the map. I'm not happy seeing this to be fair. Oh yeah, baby. We got railways unlocked. Look at all these good production methods we're going to start embracing right now. Before we do that though, we have to actually build some railways. So let's start with uh, railways where we desperately need them for market access in Moscow and in Rostov apparently let's build four and then let's just build one in every single state that we have even the south we're gonna need a lot of transport being produced after we switch our production methods to include railways so the more that we get the merrier and I'm also gonna be building some uh, universities I forgot to build some early on and I need them because I have a pretty bad situation with my literacy I have 23% literacy my people are pretty illiterate let's say oh did they just cave they didn't even do the war all right let's uh do the same to the imamat in that case hey we just got per capita taxation boys look at this that jumped us by another 50,000. oh my god this is amazing that really just boosted our economy so much right there let's check uh, the rest of our laws what we can do next surf them is pretty bad we want to abolish surf them that was actually surprisingly fast considering that we had negative support for this okay glad to see that and we didn't get any rebellion Rebellion, which is a double whammy take note guys I did play this like four times before I started recording this video So I do know exactly what I'm doing the first two times it was a lot rougher trust me on that Let's actually get religious schools too since that's gonna improve our education access for the entirety of the country Well most of the country holy mother of god. I just noticed by abolishing serfdom. We got up to a hundred thousand from medium taxation That's because before most serfs could not afford to pay taxes Taxes, they uh, they were serfs now they're not so they can pay taxes big brain big brain boys and look at this juicy water tube boiler this is gonna really boost us up so much initially it's gonna be a debuff because we don't have that many tools and coal but we're producing more tools and coal so it's gonna get better same goes for our mines initially it's gonna take a little bit of a hit from uh, switching to condensed engine pump but after we start producing more tools and coal we're gonna get a huge amount we also need to build more ports since we're lacking convoys big time despite being being a massive country we do not have too much access to the sea it is something that russia has been struggling with historically for a very long time it's also why i've decided to get all of these colonies around random locations because end of the day they also offer me more convoys and the more convoys i got the more trade i can do with everybody and more tariffs and more money and so on it's a snowball in effect let's uh, also begin our colonization of south america colonizing south america is russia how historical is that right the next two pages are completely filled with railways that need to be built how did i not build chemical plants yet jesus mother of god let's get 25 chemical plants going since i'm getting so much money and i almost managed to fill up my gold reserves i'm gonna lower the uh, taxation a little bit this is gonna make people a little bit more loyal as well we got 2.9 million disloyal radicals and the great part is that we can also switch to skirmish infantry at least for our main army we don't have professional armies enacted yet so we have to wait until we uh, switch our conscription center 
centers too. That means we're close to the same level of armies as Prussia was at the start, but rest assured, they probably invested in their armies by now, and they're way better than they were at the start. When it comes to distribution of power, you basically lose a lot of authority the less power the actual government has. So at the start, because we are an autocracy, we have 250 authority, but every single time we enact a different legislation, it goes down by 50 authority. So if we say enact the wealth voting, we only have 100 authority, meaning we lost 150 authority. I'm not going for landed voting because that's going to give more power to the rich aristocrats, capitalists, and so on. I'm going for wealth voting, even though it does mean the power will definitely go to the rich people. It's a lot better than landed voting. And it's also better than census in the sense that I get 50 more authority that I can use early on. Later, we can switch to census when we don't need authority as much. Looks like Italy also formed. I don't know when they formed, but that was super fast. Holy snaps, that's faster than North Germany. And they're at war with the British for some reason and losing badly too. Let's see what's going on here. So this war has already on the Italian side 63,000 dead. Oh, they won. They won the war. They just, they won the war right there. Let's also get more education access in our country. It also gives more conversion, but that's not a bad thing. I don't mind people being a little bit more orthodox. France wants to enter a defensive pact with us. Defensive pact with France probably will be the best choice. The Trans-Siberian Railway. Because we managed to connect with railroads the entirety of the country, we get a ton of production throughput, the uh, coal, iron, and sulfur, or railway building throughput. No, we're gonna go for the iron and coal. Definitely need that. Double whammy, as they say in Russia. Organized sports and wealth voting. What else can you ask for, right? I don't know, Ludi. How about some uh, freedom, bro? Shut up. How dare you? Go to the gulag right now. Hey, my boys, look at that. We can change to laissez-faire. The reason I'm going for that particular law is because it does give us 25% loan interest rate reduction. That onto itself is a huge amount. 50% capitalist investment pool, again, is insane. Oh, what? Time to put down more natives? Hey, else to the yeah. Who else is down for this, boys? Let's do it. And guess what? Papa Nitroglycerin is in town, and he's got a lot of explosive gifts for you. Do you get what I'm saying? Explosive gifts. It's dynamite. It's dynamite, okay? Since we have pretty low infamy right now, let's continue a few expansion wars into the uh, Kivan, Bukhara, and Kokand areas. We want to take all of the stands for ourselves. They're like my little Pokemons, really. Poke stand, gotta catch them all. Was that too much? That might have been a little bit too much, wasn't it? Oh, screw you, Persia. The Brits are gonna make you cancel your slaves, Persia, as consequence. To pay for your sins of attacking me. How dare you meddle in my affairs here, huh? How dare you? Come on, Britain, join my side. There you go. Britain is upset that you have slaves, you bastards. I just realized I don't actually have a professional army, so this might not be so good. Wait, what? What, 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 what? No, Kiva, you assholes. Did they just make peace with me and they gave me the one province? I hate this. I hate this so much. I wish they went to war with me so I could take more provinces. Well, on the bright side, that does mean I can attack more nations here since uh, I don't have a truce with them. So let's go with this boy over here. Let's go with the coke hand. Is that where all the coke comes from? Coke and what? Coke and what? Come on. Make your mind up, country. Moldova wants to join my customs union. Yeah, sure. Why not, Moldova? Come over here, boy. Come here, boy. Let's see if we can get Valachia in it, too. Isn't Moldova still a protectorate of, uh... It's not. How? How do they stop being a protectorate of... Oh, my God. The Ottomans lost against Egypt again, didn't they? Egypt randomly made them release Moldova. Not sure how I feel about that. Finally, we have a war, boys. Let's go and show what we're made out of, okay? We're made out of grain, most likely, because we're Russians. Let's see how this battle's gonna... Oh, come on. Am I actually losing the battle? Ah, Russia, Russia, Russia. Seriously, you're losing against NATO? bro. At least we got less fair. That's something. There you go. We got one victory so far. And from that one victory, we got half of their country. Okay, I'm liking the way that this is going. At least we now know Russia can fight against defenseless natives. That's what we know so far. Oh, I'm infamous, guys. I got 26.5. I'm gonna have to chill after this for a while then. You know what they say? Poor laws are better than no laws. Am I right? Of course I'm right. If there's no laws, then I can slap you in the face if you say I'm not right. If there's poor laws, I can can slap you and then I have to pay 
a bribe to get away with it, okay? So there's some justice involved. Prussia versus Hanover. My money is on Prussia. Albeit Prussia is losing a lot more troops than Hanover is. I don't know why. Guessing Hanover somehow managed to get better technology than Prussia. And finally, we got the North German Federation formed as well as apparently poor laws, which means we can get rid of more radicals when we need to by investing in our welfare system. Hmm, we are toying with some dangerous technologies. A labor movement that leads to social Mm -hmm. Looks like there's a pretty big war in North America, US versus Mexico. Mexico is getting help from uh, France and US is getting help from Great Britain. Obviously the US is gonna win, they got way more troops and everything, but it's interesting to see how the French are smart enough to try and cuck on over the Americans before they get too big. I probably should have helped the uh, Mexicans myself now that I think about it. Oh my god, are you kidding me? I left this for the Japanese and the British are colonizing Sakhalin. Alright, well I'm gonna have to colonize it also in that case. Oh, I hate it when somebody does this. About time that we can do the secret police, everybody's favorite police force, voted best police force also by the Times magazine of 1861. Same magazine that voted some other dodgy individuals as man of the hour in the 30s. Not gonna give away too much, but they had a weird mustache. We've also really entered the industrial revolution since we now have access to the rotary valve engines, meaning a lot more production is gonna come underway now. So I guess the next step is gonna be to focus on my military, which is totally lacking. Pretty sure everyone already has trench infantry, and I'm still stuck with line infantry for my conscription centers. It's that bad. I've done the colonization of Hokkaido, but I really don't want it. I'm gonna release it as an independent country. Hopefully this way, Japan conquers Ezo and makes it a part of their country. I'm doing my best to make a beautiful, bright Japan here, guys. And it's also time to conquer the last of the stands. Well, not really the last. I guess uh, Afghanistan also is in the way, right? Hey, they just gave up? <laughs> we gotta wait for a while now. We got 21 reputation. Well, infamy 21. So once we go down to 15, we can attack a bigger country like Afghanistan or maybe even Persia and take the rich oil fields that Persia has before anybody else does. What the schnapps is happening in Germany, boys? We got radical North German Federation and North German Federation. Oh my god, the radicals are winning. Is that like a sort of revolution? I'm so confused what's happening here. Oh my god. Uh, this is horrible. Even the Bavarians united against the Germans. Oh, this is horrible to look at. I don't want to see this anymore. I want my beautiful Germany to be fine. Everything is fine. <laughs> I'm just gonna not, not look at the West anymore from now on. Die! 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 Oh my god, I love to get die imports. It's funny how you need opium to maintain your armies. It's like the German army in the Second World War. Opium is one of the most annoying trade goods because it can only be produced in certain parts of the world, like uh, this area here that I just recently conquered as well as Afghanistan most of North India really that being said it is a vital good when it comes to your armies and that's exactly why I'm gonna be attacking Afghanistan next we're going full-on historical Russian mode here this time we're gonna be fighting a few other nations like Persia in order to get Afghanistan because uh, Persia decided they want to defend them so it's gonna be a little bit tougher but it's also good for us we get a little bit of experience for our armies and we learn what we're doing bad so we can improve upon it for the next wars unsurprisingly our troops are basically way better than the uh, Iranian troops, but we're still losing battles. Well, that just goes to show that Russia has a secret debuff that makes them lose battles. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, it's not like that. It's just this game's combat system sucks dick. That's what's happening. Please, please update the combat system. <laughs> we're still making progress, though, of course. We are a massive conglomerate compared to two insignificant backwards nations. I only have one war goal for one province in Afghanistan, so I'm gonna have to do a couple more words later to take Persian lands to. Oh my god, I can have 83 opium plantations in Uzbekia. Hell yeah, I'm building all of that schnapps. Russia, the biggest producer of opium in the world. Everybody knows this is common knowledge. And also the place with charity hospitals, apparently. Well, looks like once more Germany and Austria is at odds. Hopefully this time it is for the actual unification of Germany. Setting up a proper electricity grid is not easy. It's gonna take a lot of money. I mean, just building these power plants here is insane how much it costs. It basically costs us right now 120,000 in construction goods continuous and it's tanking our economy a little bit but after we finish this and we electrify the industry it's gonna give out 10 times the investment oh germany just enforced stuff conquer moravia westphalia wait what whoa that is disgusting 
disgusting, man. And apparently Bavaria was a vassal or something like that of Austria. Now they're independent. Wow. There's also a diplomatic play in South Germany here. The target is Württemberg. Germany wants to take Württemberg. Yeah, they're definitely going for the unification here. Someone say Russian Africa. I said, I said Russian Africa. You got a problem with that, bro? Finally, a proper war with Afghanistan. But this time we made a few extra war targets. So we're going to get all of this area here once we win the war. Meaning that we're going to cut off the British from the Persian lands. For the first time ever, Russian troops are actually doing a good thing here and we're actually advancing without losing every single battle. If you've seen my streams, you know exactly what I'm talking about here. Let's check and see what our infamy is like. We got 42 infamy right now. Oof, that is not good. We're very, very close to the limit over there. Excuse me, sir, have you heard of the good lord professional army? Well, he's here and he's here to stay in the Russian lands where he's basically at home. And remember how I was mentioning that I'm gonna be cucking over the Brits here? Well, I just did that. Next target is gonna be Persia as soon as we uh, build a few more conscription centers first, I guess. We might as well. Don't you just love it when there's little sprinkles of Russia all around the southern bit of uh, South America? I do. I really love that. Also, weird to see that Bolivia and uh, Peru made a nation. Peru, Bolivia. That I, I never knew this was ever a thing. Hey, we got skyscraper site identified in Moscow, which is amazing because Moscow is where we have most of our government administration buildings. And the fact that we now have automated irrigation is huge. 85,000 laborers less is a lot of extra money that we don't need to pay these bad boys, but it does mean we're gonna get more radicals from having fired more people. So we have to deal with that situation and we gotta get better policing forces. We got skirmish infantry as well as shrapnel artillery. So we are a professional army. We just gotta research trench coats next, I guess, to be a modern army then. And it happened, boys. We just became the world's greatest power according to GDP, outshining the French and their colonial possessions because the only reason the French have so much uh, GDP is because they keep stealing land from the poor Africans rather than building up schnapps in their own country like we are doing. Ignore the fact that I just completely conquered all of the stands. They're, they're Russians, okay? Just don't think about it too much. After quite a while getting our asses kicked, we're actually winning every engagement now since we have invested in our army quite a lot and they are actually on par with the rest of the European powers. But yeah, I know I'm still bullying uh, Iranians. I'm not bullying Europeans. For now, we're even winning when they have more units than us in those battles. That's quite impressive considering the Russians used to lose even though they had more units before. I guess that's what a professional army is all about, right? Until the next time, check out this amazing United States run. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support. 